As you can see, there's a lot of side to side play, which indicates worn out tie rods on the C46. So today we're gonna pull those out, reinstall with new inner and outer tie rods and get the thing aligned. So here we have a better look. This is our outside tie rod. And then under here, under the boot, that's our inside tie rod. That's where they join together. Today we're gonna to be replacing that entire assembly plus the boot, as well as the inner and outer tie rod on the driver's side as well. Also, can we just take a moment to enjoy how clean this M54 is with 199K? Thing is not leaking a single drop of anything. Here's our new tie rod ends. I got them from FCP Euro. They look a bit different color, but I assume they just changed manufacturing styles between, but they are both from Lemp Order, so OE, and then Febby Bilstein boot kits. Now, because I left the key in the ignition with the car in park and completely off, I'm still able to turn the wheels. So just a nice helpful tip to give you some more room to access this outer tie rod. Nice. Also take a pickle or a fork like this, and try to drive it and separate it that way. But my favorite way is using my snappy air hammer just with a punch bit. Get down inside that nut, get right onto that stud. Boom. Knocked her right out. Boom. Good. For this one, I'm gonna disassemble the inner tie rod from the outer tie rod. That way I can count the threads that the outside tie rod goes on to the inner. That way I can eyeball the alignment so it's not too difficult to drive it over to the alignment shop. So I'm gonna throw the stud back in real quick and I'm gonna bust this nut loose. We're just gonna start counting threads. So half, one, half, two, 19. 19 threads on the right side. Now for this inner tie rod, let's bust this clamp off. That way we can remove our old boot. We'll expose our nut for the inner tie rod. That'll work. For some extra leverage, this should do the job. There we go. Boom. Nice. All right, there's one side disassembled. Let's get this new boot on. The new inner tie rod in. Oops. that new clamp situated. Schnubber that goes to that schnubber location. And then this boot will seal down on. Things it like full lock right now. So this tie rod's really pushed out. Throw our nut back on. One, two, Three, nineteen. Boom. Bring our nut forward. Drop this guy back in here just to kind of hold it stationary for me. And then a 24 mil wrench to lock our adjustment down. Now, these aren't the best tool for the job, but they should get the job done. These are knippics. That's how you say it, but they're just these flat face cutters. Uh, the tool for this has like a little flat piece inside these cutters and it pushes up as you squeeze the clamp tight, but I think this will suffice. Let's give it a try. All right, that's feeling good. One side is done.
17, 18, 18 and a half. All right, I can bust this clamp loose. Now you can ditch this little boot. And then our nut. And our collar goes that way. Okay, and then one, that's two, three, 16, 17, 18. They changed the nut size on this? It's like a 22. Boom. We're all done, folks. I feel like there could be a little bit of extra play in the rack. But we'll see. Get her a line and take her for a drive. But so far, so good. Well guys, that went pretty smooth. You know, it didn't go perfect. The adjustable wrench saved the day, the adjustable wrench and the breaker bar, but that's what DIY is all about, right? Making it work with what you got at your disposal. I sure as hell don't know everything there is to know on these BMWs, and I don't really consider myself the subject matter expert. I have a little bit of experience from working at the shop for a few years, but there's a lot of you guys out there that know a lot more than I do as far as this stuff goes. So if you ever have any information you wanna chime in or add in, feel free to put it in the comment section. And if it's something worthwhile to the other viewers, I'll make sure to pin it and keep it at the top of the comments. You know, I'm just a guy that likes to wrench on stuff and make things better. And uh, I'm just hoping to provide some entertainment or some value for you guys so you guys can enjoy or learn something new along the way. Next step is going to be getting this thing aligned tomorrow morning, and then we'll get her up on the highway and see how she's driving after the tie rod replacement. I think after we get the alignment done, I'm going to swap the seat out with my manually 46 seat. Then after that, we're pretty much good to go. I just got to get the recalls done next Thursday at my local BMW dealership. Funny thing about that, when I called to make that appointment for my, for my airbag recalls, I gave the guy my email and he says, hey, do you have a YouTube channel? And I said, yeah, I do. And he's like, oh, I've seen some of your videos. You do some pretty cool stuff. And that was the first time that I had talked to somebody either on the phone or in person that had seen my channel before. So I thought that was pretty cool. It was a pretty surreal moment for me. So thanks to all you guys for sharing, commenting, liking all my videos, watching. Really appreciate it. It's really turning into something pretty cool for me. The passenger seat in this thing is pretty worn. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swap this seat out, this passenger seat out of my manual trans E46. So let's get started. So if you've watched the channel for some time, I'm sure you've seen me remove a seat. You got two nuts in the front, two bolts in the rear, and then the seat belt runs down in the back, right? And then it secures into the seat with another bolt. 16 millimeter socket is all you need. Maybe a plastic screwdriver to pop these little caps off. There's these little caps that, that hide the studs. Now I need you to get out of the way. So good for the back. Boom, there we are. Let's see how fast I can get this seat out.
took me a minute 50 seconds to get that passenger seat out. We can definitely tell that this seat is a lot more clean and a lot less tired, so I'm going to inspect the bottom of it and then get her swapped. Just want to make sure everything looks the way it's supposed to down here. Yeah, the puppy's been riding shotgun with me, so I want to do the best I can at getting this thing cleaned up first. I'm going to use some Griot's Garage Leather 3-in-1. This is like their cream. That's looking good. Making me want to keep this seat. Oh, I just dropped that gloop on my boots. Look at this beautiful seat. Oh yeah, I'm pretty happy we did this swap. Now this car has seats that it deserves, you know? They're just both really nice seats. This, this seat's really clean. I went and saw the physical therapy yesterday for my back. I gotta focus on keeping that lumbar arch. Not very easy to do when you're pulling seats out of cars. I don't need my physical therapist to see this. But that lumbar sure does feel good. Gotta love a good quality BMW seat. They're not always the squishiest and the softest, but when it comes to proper lumbar and spine alignment, you can really get these seats dialed in, especially the ones with the side bolsters that come in and hug you. My E60 had these crazy seats, electronic headrests, and uh, the headrests would fold forward and tuck your head in this little cushion, and the side bolsters would fold in, and oh, they were really nice seats. I'd love to get another E60. Now we just gotta get put the other seat back in my manual, my manual E46. Well, I guess because the other one got cleaned up, this one deserves it too, so let's clean this one up as well. Now is this a lot of lube? Yes, but these seats are old and dry. They need all the hydration I can give them. I've even put this kind of stuff on seats and then put trash bags over it and let it soak in for 24 hours. I take this moment to give a shout out to my boy Johnny Tweed, first member on the YouTube channel, always been there in the comments, real one since day one, really appreciate you dude, thanks again for always supporting me. It's amazing how much better this seat looks just with some fresh leather conditioner and a little bit of love. Well, that's fixed. What? 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 Last order of business today. We need to pull the rear wheels off and make some changes to the brakes. Let me get that done and I'll show you why.
Now, if you look at this outside pad, you can see it's a bit large for that inside diameter on the rotor surface. You can also tell that right down here, that pad is actually hanging off of that rotor about a half a millimeter. So I saw this after I finished that rear brake service video and I wanted to get the car back on the road again. So I left the pads as is, but I called FCP Euro support and I told them that the Akibono pads were not sized correctly for those Zimmerman rotors. So I ordered up a new set of Techstar pads. We're gonna slap those on and I'm gonna send these Akibonos back to SCP Euro and get my money back. Also, my brake sensor was not included in my last brake package, so we're gonna have a good opportunity to slap that on as well. Let's rip these out quick time. Got a set of tech stars, 2148703 if you're curious. BMW 3 Series, E46, 98 and up. I'm a big fan of tech stars. Let's see if these fit any better than these Aki Bonos. Wacky no nos. Tech stars better. So on the inside, we're looking good still. We still have a little bit of room. And on the rears, it's perfect. Right where we want it, inside that outside lip of the rotor. We don't want those pads hanging off because it's just gonna cause problems, make all sorts of noise, and you'll have a big old lip of like a millimeter of pad that never got shaved down. Much better fitment. I'm very glad that I got rid of those Aki Bonos and got this set of tech stars. Might lose a little bit of money on the exchange, but I'm gonna be able to sleep better at night. Silly puppy. Hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? Time to route this brake sensor. I don't like doing these brake sensors. They always drop a bunch of garbage in your eyes. You know, I'm curious how Les Schwab adjusted the alignment in the rear when there's no marks on the uh, rear control arm bolts. Interesting. Someone manipulated the sensors and just said, oh, it's good. So they definitely adjusted camber here on the lower arm. In order to adjust toe, you have to break these loose. And these were never touched during that alignment. So I know they didn't adjust toe. I'm going to have to look at the alignment results and see if any toe was adjusted because that was just a manipulation of sensors if it was. Did you eat a centipede? Are you all drooly because you ate a centipede? I found the carcass. She ate a dead centipede and now she's all frothy in the mouth. <laughs> it's okay. Well, that's gonna do it for this one. I got one more episode on the books for this car, guys. I'm gonna be rebuilding that key battery, soldering in a new battery. I also have a rack and pinion on the way. I just bought a used one on eBay. I'm still not happy with how the steering is feeling after new inner and outer tie rods. So I'm gonna swap the rack out because I think there's some play in it. 
But stay tuned and I promise I will have a good video for you guys coming soon. If you guys enjoyed today's episode, please feel free to hit that subscribe button, drop a comment, like the video. It really helps me grow the channel and it really helps with the YouTube algorithm. I hope you enjoyed or I hope you learned something new. And as always, folks, I will see you on my next day off. Cheers.